Hey guys welcome back to the channel. In this story, Naruto is a one-man team after graduating from the academy, Naruto starts to reveal his true self. Won't everyone be surprised at what the demon can do? Powerful Naruto. Naruto into harem be sure to check the description for the creator of the great fanfic and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to this channel. Now let's start the story. Chapter 4 Revelations, Meetings and a New Mission Disclaimer, Don't Own Naruto. Quick note. No Naruto is not a sociopath. He's lead a difficult life, but he does know how to interact with others based on the current situation. I would consider him closer to MPD, but it's more like he changes his mood to best adapt to the current atmosphere rather than having completely different personalities. Naruto both felt, and smelled a lot better after a nice hot shower. Now dressed in a new set of clothes he grabbed the stack of scrolls his clones had left on his kitchen table, as well as the scroll containing his findings from his surprise mission, before heading out the door. He sped off towards the Hokage Tower not noticing another group, containing his more tumultuous classmates, heading the same way via the streets as he jumped from rooftop to rooftop overhead. He arrived at the tower in no time and walked in completely ignoring the secretary as she called after him telling him to wait. Pushing open the door he strode in with a huge smile plastered on his face. Hey a Gigi San. He looked at the older man just in time to see a flash of orange drop out of his line of sight behind the desk. Ah, Naruto-kun. I didn't expect you here so soon. The Hokage said with a mild blush. Naruto cocked an eyebrow at the old man's unease. Clearly. So I trust everything went well on your mission. As well as a mission can go when you're in a dark tunnel surrounded by dead decaying bodies in a madman's experiments I suppose. He tossed the mission scroll and the storage scroll to the Hokage who caught both easily. Knowing what the mission scroll said already he opened it just enough to write his signature before storing it in a safe behind him. Turning back to his desk he addressed the storage scroll and began to examine the map Naruto drew on its surface, scowling a bit. Naruto, I'm glad that you drew such a detailed map, but it doesn't really help us much. Naruto sighed at once again being underestimated. Oji oh san, please don't make me explain it. Seeing the confused look on the cage's face he sighed before walking up to the desk and channeling chakra into one of the seals, allowing a scroll to pop out. Sarutobi scratched the back of his head and let out an embarrassed laugh while Naruto just rolled his eyes and returned to his earlier position waiting patiently while Sarutobi read through a few of the scrolls, eyebrows raising almost as often as scowls crossed his face while more information was revealed him. When he was nearing the end of the third scroll Naruto decided to explain the other items he stored in the scroll. Oji-san, before you get too far, and I fall asleep, I just want to point out two important things I sealed in there. Pointing out the seals off to the side he explained each one. This one holds a scroll that contains the lair's armory, and this one contains the library. I figured you would want to look through them. There could be important information in the library, and the weapons could restock our own armory a bit. Channeling chakra into the two seals he indeed found scrolls labeled, armory, and, library. Opening the armory one first he was surprised to see how organized it was. Weapons were arranged by type and size with descriptions and quantities clearly written. Now curious he set the armory scroll aside and opened the library scroll. Inside it began with an alphabetical listing of books followed by categories of jutsu scrolls. All arranged by type, rank and name. Rolling up the two scrolls he set them aside and looked at Naruto with a gleaming smile. Taking out a sheet of paper he wrote a few things down on it before signing and handing it over to Naruto. Who looked down at it and read to himself. S rank mission completion form this paper certifies the completion of AS rank mission by. Uzumaki Naruto is certified by. Sarutobi Hiruzen, Sandame Hokage there was also a small note at the bottom. Bonus for going above and beyond the expectations of the mission. Naruto once again cocked an eyebrow before looking back at the Hokage who was continuing his reading of the next section. Naruto, the next time I need something catalogued I am definitely sending for you. Organization, detail and accuracy. You did it all perfectly. Not to mention taking the time to seal up the most valuable items and making sure they go where they need to be to allow the best use for the sake of the village. For that I thank you and offer you anything you want from this mission, so long as it is nothing too dangerous. Thanks Gigi-san but there is nothing there that I can see myself needing at the moment. 
I have plenty of weapons and am still going through all the jutsu scrolls I've acquired over the years. I'll stick with what I have for now. Being able to complete such a high-ranking mission while only being a genin is more than enough of a reward for me. Now if I could be excused I still have to hand in my other missions that I've completed today. Receiving a nod Naruto bowed and left the room. Naruto, you are going to go far. I just pray that you keep your loyal attitude and don't let success go to your head. Shaking his head a little to lose such thoughts he took the two sealing scrolls and stashed them in his safe. He would deal with them later. For now he turned back to examining the scrolls hidden amongst the map. Perhaps the information here along with whatever Anko and Ibiki could find out would shed some light on his former student's goals. It would seem his alternate reading material would have to be set aside for a while. Down in the mission hall Aruka was bored out of his mind. The new teams were all taking their tests today, and all the old teams were out on longer missions. This would be a slow day for sure, but he managed to let his mind wander every once in a while to his former student that was apparently already achieving more than his peers. Hell, he was successfully completing more missions in a day than most shinobi completed in a week. Granted they were all D ranks so far, but even so it was still an impressive number. Not to mention crushing the old record for catching Tora. No, crushing would be putting it nicely. Naruto completely obliterated the old record and wouldn't likely be matched for some time. He was brought out of his thoughts when the door opened and the object of those thoughts walked in. Ah Naruto, so you've completed a mission today then. Which one is it? Haruka was already flipping through his clipboard as he looked for the listing of missions the boy had taken that morning. Finding them he looked up just as Naruto dumped all 12 scrolls in front of him. Ah, okay. Which is it? He scowled a little when the boy started laughing. As he waited for the boy to settle down a bit the chunin glared at him. Ha ha ha, sorry Uruka sensei, he he, they are all done. Hey, I told you this morning they would be didn't I? He choked down more laughter as he watched his former sensei. If the man was surprised at that, he couldn't wait to see his reaction when he handed him his other successful mission. He waited until Uruka finished filling in the necessary information and brought his attention back to the waiting preteen. I have one more mission that I acquired while I was doing those, so you'll need to add this one into your list. With that in a small flourish he set the paper from the sandame in front of the skeptical former teacher. As soon as the man looked at it Naruto could swear he saw his optical nerves for how wide his eyes went. Uruka looked from the paper to Naruto, back and forth a few times trying to gain his voice. How? When? Where? Um easily, a couple hours ago, and that's confidential. Is this real? Was all Uruka could think, but he knew the Hokage's signature by heart and his seal was also there. There was no denying the page in front of him. In a daze he wrote in the information. No doubt whoever totaled up today's missions to hand out the pay would need to confirm this one with the Hokage, even if they already had a signed paper. A genin doing a S rank mission solo was unheard of. If you're finished, I have two questions for you. Getting a reluctant nod Naruto continued. First, where can I get a bingo book? Um, you would have to get one from the Anbu headquarters. They handle all of that information in the bounties. Fair enough. Next, what are my missions for this afternoon? It took all of Uruka's willpower to not scream at the boy for making them all look bad with his overachieving, but at the same time he couldn't help but be proud at how quickly his student was turning out missions, and seemingly undeterred by their monotony. Resigning himself to fate he waved casually to the restocked pile of D-ranked missions and watched as Naruto picked through them. Nay, Uruka sensei Genin are allowed to do low C-rank missions right. Uruka knew he wasn't going to like where this was going already, but he was obliged to answer. Hi, Genin teams are allowed to go on low-risk C-rank missions after a specified number of D-rank missions are completed. They normally only involve bandits or escorts, though sometimes there can be an outside influence or misinformation that raises the rank during the mission. Most of those low-end missions are done with countries that are bordering fire country to keep the risk of encountering too many unfamiliar ninja at a minimum. If something does go wrong though, they have a Jonin sensei there to get them out of trouble. Thanks Aruka sensei. I'll keep that in mind for later. For now I'll take these scrolls. A small mountain of scrolls rolled out in front of the Chunin who hesitantly began to mark them down. He was beyond worrying about numbers now. Naruto had already proven himself capable of doing multiple missions quickly. 
Again he noted there were one or two physically demanding missions amongst numerous random missions. This time it was wood cutting, and a small one for someone moving into a new house. Finishing the last notation he set the last scroll back in front of him as he noticed Naruto writing out another scroll. If he didn't know any better he'd swear it was a ceiling scroll. His suspicion were proven correct as Naruto stacked the mission scrolls on the newly made ceiling scroll and sealed them inside before rolling up the scroll and shoving it back in his pocket before thanking the man and leaving again. Baruka could only shake his head as he learned more and more about his former student, and with each new piece of information he got he was starting to think he had taught the boy far less than the boy actually learned. Outside the mission hall Naruto once again formed his army which quickly ran off after obtaining their new missions. Leading the remnants away he made a quick stop at the Anbu headquarters while his clones waited patiently outside. Walking up to the counter and ringing the bell brought forward an old woman who seemed to have sucked on about 10 too many lemons and wore glasses that could probably double as paper weights. Hello I would like to know how I can acquire a bingo book. You a ninja? Hi. You any good? I like to think so, yes. Term. Well bingo books cost 500 Ryu. If you're a ninja then you're welcome to purchase one. Though from the sounds of it you seem pretty young. I don't think you are going to get much out of it. Regardless she grabbed one of the booklets from the shelf behind her. Naruto was slightly put out, but not deterred. He grabbed his money pouch and pulled out the necessary amount before handing it over to the woman. Even the strongest ninja can be taken down if he doesn't know what he's getting into. Having knowledge of what I can handle is something that could save my life someday. The woman took the offered money and handed him the thick booklet. True enough boy. If half the ninja here were smart enough to know their limitations our memorial stone wouldn't be half as big as it is. Good luck out there and don't get yourself killed off too soon. Hey thanks Oba-san. Maybe someday I'll live long enough for my picture to show up in one of these. Waving he made his way out of the building as the old woman smiled approvingly at his back. Yes, if half our shinobi were that smart going into this mess we wouldn't have much to worry about. Isn't that right Nako-chan? The woman fixed her glasses on her nose as she turned away from the counter. Hi Taicho. Impromptu high-ranking mission aside, the rest of Naruto's week was pretty much the same each day. Wake up, do a dozen or so missions, eat lunch, do another dozen or so missions, training then bed. The only exception being that when he found out Hinata wasn't busy on certain afternoons he would take her out to lunch or dinner. They even made plans for Sunday to have a small picnic. That would be tomorrow, so today being Saturday and the mission hall being closed on weekends, Naruto decided he'd spend what time he had free training. He had been setting up clones in his hideaway all week, training what he thought they could transfer to him. Jutsu, Chakra Control, Kenjutsu and Taijutsu were the most noticeable acquired talents, but they still needed tested to see if he did actually pick them up and could remember them. He had slept in a little since he was in no hurry. As such he was arriving at the entrance to his hideaway when the sun was just barely kissing the roofs of the taller buildings. He quickly disappeared while merchants started making their way to their stores to set up their wares. As the first of them reached their shops, he was already creating his clones. By the time they opened up, he was already discovering what he'd hoped. By the time they got their first customers, he was already testing the combat prowess of his newly learned skills. By the time his old classmates were starting their training, he was taking a well-deserved break with a visit to Ikiraku's. He was on his third bowl of ramen when some new company dropped by. Greetings Naruto-san. Having a full mouth, Naruto could only nod in greeting. Hokage-sama wishes to speak with you at your convenience. He swallowed hard before speaking. Thank you Anbu-san. I'll be there right after I finish this bowl. The Anbu nodded before disappearing via Shunshin. Old man, looks like I gotta go. I'll see ya later. Naruto laid his money on the counter and headed to the Hokage Tower. Deciding to follow protocol for once, he addressed the secretary. Not to mention it was Saturday so there was the possibility that the man wasn't in the tower at all, so it would have been embarrassing to just barge in with no one there. Oi, Oji-san wanted to see me. Is he here? The secretary seemed to have not heard him at all as she just continued writing on some paperwork. After standing for a couple minutes waiting patiently he decided to try again. Anyo, did you hear me? He was met with a glare that he was all too familiar with. Sighing he continued. Okay look. I'm not really liking you at the moment, 
and it's rather obvious that you loathe me, but I was summoned by the Hokage to see him and if you don't tell me when and where I can find him then two things are going to happen. First, I will barge in that room and try to find him myself. Second I will let him know of your refusal to help me which will probably end in your early termination or worse. The woman's scowl only deepened, but she finally relented and simply waved him off towards the door. Muttering under her breath something about demons and murder. Shaking his head Naruto just entered the office and slumped down into a chair. So what's this about Oji-san? It took a moment for Hiruzen to finish the paper he was currently working on before stamping, declined, on it. Sighing as he set the sheet aside he turned to his guest. Naruto, due to an influx of missions lately, and as such a lessening of personnel, we are a bit short-handed at the moment. Yet at the same time the documents you found could be of great value to us. As such, and due to your prior involvement in finding them, I would like you to take them back to your safe house and go through them. This is to be done immediately and as quickly as possible while still maintaining quality. I would assume you know how to do this by your mission completion count and the, the comments they held. As much as I would like to assign this to other departments, this information could be very dangerous in the wrong hands. You are to tell no one except myself what you find out, and you are to tell no one, including myself, where you are conducting your research. This will be classified as a higher rank and possible S rank depending on what the library contains as well as how beneficial the information is. Do you have any questions? Only one, what do you consider as important? Plans, village secrets, experiment details and anything that could possibly cripple Konoha or make one of our enemies stronger. Good luck Naruto. Tossing the library storage scroll at the boy he waved him off before grabbing another sheet from his pile of papers. Permanent bodyguard assignment for the civilian council members and their families, do they think we just pop a new ninja out of a scroll whenever we need one? Denied. Naruto was already halfway to his hideaway before he found himself suddenly surrounded by what appeared to be Anbu. Danzo-sama requests your audience boy. One of them said with obvious contempt. Naruto tried to think of who this, Danzo, was. He knew he heard the name before. Ah yes, the Hokage had been cursing that name on quite a few occasions. I'm sorry, but I'm in a bit of a hurry. Please give Danzo-san my. It seems you misunderstood me. When Danzo-sama requests an audience of someone, they give him an audience. The man pulled his ninja out of its sheath a bit to emphasize his point. Now Naruto was on edge. Someone demanding him with the use of force was no one he wanted to see while carrying sensitive documents. Putting his hands in his pockets he glared at the Anbu that seemed to be the leader. Then, without even blinking he let a huge grin cross his face, confusing the Anbu right before he let a small ball fall from his pocket. When the four ninja saw the ball drop they reacted, but it was already too late. With a small pop the area was covered in smoke. By the time the smoke cleared, all that was left were four very pissed off ninja and one tied up log. Running down an alleyway Naruto let out a small chuckle as he made his way towards his destination. He took an indirect route this time to confuse any possible trackers. Though it would give the men more time to find him, it would also keep him away from main viewing areas and not give a clear idea of where he was headed. There were two points during his journey that he had to hide himself as he saw two different groups of Anbu making their way across town. He couldn't tell if they were looking for him or not, but he wasn't going to take that chance. After another half hour of alley crawling and shadow creeping he was back at the entrance to his underground domain. Slipping inside he gave a sigh of relief as he made his way back down the tunnel. Today was the closest he'd gotten to getting tailed here, and he wasn't happy about it. He would have to start making sure he wasn't followed from now on now that it seemed someone wanted to see him very badly, and that someone was a person that the Hokage didn't like. Anyone that the old man was wary of was definitely someone Naruto didn't want any close contact with. Back in the safety of his second home he dispelled his current clones before making a new set. If this information was as important as Oji-san thought then he wouldn't want to risk getting it crossed with his training. Channeling chakra through the scroll he began handing out various scrolls and books to the clones around him. Since they would be stationary through most of this he had created more than normal. As they got a scroll and took a blank scroll with writing materials from a nearby rack, they found a place to sit on the floor, walls or ceiling and got to work. It didn't take long for Naruto to find out just how serious this information was. 
Since he had already taken the time to categorize the books and scrolls it wasn't difficult to bypass the jutsu scrolls and go right for the meat of the beast. Journals, notes and various informative literature was laid out around the room, each having a clone going through it. When they got all the information they could out of one text they brought it back to Naruto, giving a short summary before taking another item to study. Meanwhile Naruto was labeling sheets of paper and tacking them to one of the walls. Whenever two sources seemed to be related he tied a string to a senban after sticking them into the wall near the related pieces. Halfway through the scroll he was quickly becoming frustrated. Everything seemed to be related judging by the number of strings now criss-crossing the wall. There was information from everything between anatomy and theology. Almost every subject that related to humans was covered. It looked like someone was doing a completely in-depth study of humans, but why? The question raked over his brain with every new piece of information he was given. If you left out the twisted experiments, it almost seemed like a course for medical training. Very, very advanced medical training. Add in those experiments though, and everything was twisted. It seemed like something was missing though, but what? He sighed turning away from the wall again. He glanced over as a clone came up with a freshly finished book as it droned out what it had summarized from the contents. Another anatomy piece. Sighing again Naruto went to get another piece from the storage scroll when he found himself holding a jutsu scroll. Without realizing it he had gotten through the literature portion of the library. Still he hadn't found anything to solidify the connection. Leaning against the wall he regarded the scroll in his hands. It looked to be some kind of psychic projection jutsu. If only I could do that I'd transfer myself into the guy who did all this and find out what he was planning straight from. Dot the, source. Tossing the scroll to the clone so fast that it almost dispelled from the hit, he looked at his written classifications of the jutsu the storage scroll contained. Running between it and his mosaic on the wall he began writing out new slips of paper shooting them out at a frenzied pace. Needles and strings seemed to materialize around them almost as fast as they got put up. It took another half hour before he was finished, but when he did the connection was glaringly obvious. There in the center of it all were two points where the majority of the strings connected. Taking out two blank sheets of paper he wrote down every connecting point for those two concentrations before speeding out of the room, stopping only briefly to lock it behind him. Inside the clones just shrugged and went about their reading. Bursting through the doors to the Hokage Tower, Naruto flew right past a protesting secretary yet again, and through the doors to the office open before slamming them shut. He took a quick look around and instantly noticed something he really didn't want to deal with right now. There, before the Hokage was a genin team. Not just any genin team though, this was Team 7 otherwise known as Team Kakashi. Yes, here stood the people he wanted to run into the least, and all of them were glaring at him. Well all but the man behind the desk who looked a bit shocked to see the boy so soon. Hey Dobi, if you don't mind we are discussing a mission with the Hokage. Useless trash like you should wait outside while we real ninja take care of business. Sasuke seemed to have his nose stuck higher in the air than normal today. Yeah what Sasuke-kun said. Now get out of here before I knock you back through the door you came in. Sakura was already pushing up her sleeve, getting ready for a punch. Hey barging into the Hokage's office when he could be in a meeting discussing village secrets. I wouldn't be surprised if you were in a cell by the end of the day. In fact I hope that's the case because then Hinata will realize just how much of a loser you are. Kiba's grin seemed to grow as he filled his own pride with words. Ma, ma, you shouldn't say such things to a comrade. He may end up on a mission with you sometime soon. Having bad feelings between you all wouldn't be very good for teamwork now would it? Finally someone who wasn't a complete asshole to him. Now if you don't mind waiting outside Naruto. I'm sure your stories about ramen can wait a few more minutes. Spoke too soon. Sasuke turned back to the Hokage, completely ignoring the barely controlled key coming from the blonde. Sasaru Tobi-san how about that C-rank mission? I am more than ready for something other than these waste of time D-ranks. Chasing a cat around for 3 hours is not exactly my idea of ninja training. Yes Sasuke-kun needs harder missions to show off his real strength. By this point Sarutobi just wanted them all out of his sight. He knew what Naruto was here for must be important. Fine you get your C rank. He pressed a call button under his desk and told his secretary to bring the client in. Half a moment of waiting soon reveled a drunk, 
haggard-looking old man with a bottle of sake. This is Tazuna, a bridge builder from the land of waves. Your mission is to escort him home and guard him until he finishes his latest project. So these are the ones that'll be taking me huh? I ask for a C-rank mission and all I get is a bunch of brats. The man slurred out. I assure you, Tazuna-san, my team is more than capable of protecting you. Kakashi tried to reassure the man, but Naruto still saw doubt in his eyes. Voice dripping with sarcasm he let out his retort. Yes Tazuna-san. You have the famed Hitaki Kakashi escorting you, but if he fails never fear, the mighty Uchiha will save the day. Most likely by literally throwing the bubblegum princess at whoever tries to overshadow his glory. Even if you do somehow get killed I'm sure Fleabag over there will claw you out a nice grave before he tucks tail and runs. He got glares from Kiba and Sakura, an amused smile from Sarutobi, Tazuna and Kakashi, and oddly enough the mighty Uchiha seemed to not even realize the jest and looked more arrogant than ever. Like he actually believed that is exactly what would happen. Well at least with the blonde one along I won't get bored. Tazuna stated with a half-drunk smile. Sorry, but I won't be joining you on your little excursion. I'm just here to report to Oji-san what my meager self has discovered in regards to certain recent findings and what they mean for our village's future. Tazuna looked visibly saddened by the news, but reluctantly left the room with the three stooges when Kakashi told them to meet at the gate in an hour. After the door was shut Kakashi turned and put on a serious face. Dot Erm put on serious eyes. Dot I, showing he was ready to discuss serious matters. Hitaki-san I suggest you go prepare for your mission as well. Escorting a bridge builder shouldn't be taken lightly. Kakashi turned to the boy before speaking. If it involves defending the village then I believe that I should stay in case my input is needed. As one of the senior shinobi, and an ex-anbu I have expertise in many matters. Having me here would probably be best depending on what the information is, Naruto-chan. He gave Naruto an eye smile. Happy that he got a chance to return the earlier jab the boy made. I am sorry Kakashi-kun, but Naruto is correct in what he is implying. This is a mission that I gave to Naruto, requiring the utmost secrecy. The people who are allowed to know what is involved are very few, and I don't intend to make the group any larger just yet. Should we find something that we need your assistance in you will be notified. Now if you please, Naruto-kun and myself have business to discuss. Hiruzen spoke with all of his authority to make sure Kakashi got the point that the information to be exchanged was not for his ears. With a slight frown the copy ninja got up and walked out the door, sparing one last glance at the genin in the cage before closing the door behind him. Naruto walked over and locked the door, activating the security seals before walking up to the desk. Hokage-sama, I have some interesting findings from the literature and jutsu that I found in the lair. It seems it was a testing area for two experimental subjects. The first. He placed one of the two pages on the desk before continuing. Seems to be some sort of seal that enhances the bearer's strengths, but also subjects them to the will of the one who gives them the seal provided that person puts a portion of his own essence into it. As you can see on this list there was extensive testing using poisons that would weaken the subject's will, as well as enhancement seals and soul-splitting jutsu. He noticed the small tick in the Hokage's eyebrow and grew instantly suspicious. You've seen this before, or the effects. Sarutobi sighed. The boy already knew far more than he would have liked a genin to know, but he could sense the boy's loyalty to the village. It was almost palatable. Maybe not loyal to the villagers, but he would definitely never betray the village like certain others who strove only for power. Yes, Naruto. I have seen a portion of its effects. We have one of the affected in this village. Many don't trust her because of her involvement with a traitor, but she is one of our most loyal ninja regardless of what others think. I believe she was given an early version of this as, while she does show signs of pain every once in a while, she has for the most part kept it at bay. I see. If you would allow it, and if she allows it, I would like to study her infliction a bit. With all of the makings of it here we may be able to reverse engineer it, and find a way to subdue it if not remove it altogether. He could see the shock in the old man's eyes. Apparently he was still getting used to Naruto's newly found brain. Shaking out of his startled daze Sarutobi turned his attention back to the paper, reading it over before looking back at the blonde. You said there were two. Ah, yes, almost forgot the second. He placed the last sheet on the desk. 
It seems to be akin to the Yamanaka mind transfer jutsu, though much more potent. It's almost like the person was trying to permanently take over someone's body. I don't know why, but that is the best explanation I could come up with. Sorry Oji-san. Naruto felt a bit ashamed that that was the best he could surmise, but got confused when he saw how pale the old man had gotten. Oji-san. Naruto what I am about to tell you cannot leave this room. Understood. A nod for an answer was his sign to continue. You no doubt know of the traitor Orochimaru. Another nod. He was an over-ambitious student of mine that ended up being chased out of the village because of inhumane experiments he had been conducting on kidnapped villagers and ninja. The first item you brought up was his cursed seal. I know that this must have been an earlier version, and I will admit I have no idea of most of its capabilities, but what we have found is that the later versions make a person an unwilling slave once completely activated. What it takes to activate though, we never found out. Seru Tobi sighed as he looked at the next sheet. The second piece of information is an affront to humanity and never should have been dreamed up. You are correct in your analysis of its main goal. That being to take over a body completely by devouring the previous soul, thus allowing one to jump from one body to the next as often as one wants, but in doing so destroying the souls of those whose bodies you've abducted. A cold shiver went down Naruto's spine at the thought of someone using such a technique. Sure it had the benefit of becoming basically whoever you want to be, and never having to worry about old age, but at what cost? It was clear to him that this Orochimaru would have to be stopped, but how do you know who to look for when the man could be anyone? He put that thought aside though as he was more worried about things closer to home. As disturbing as this all is, I would still like to meet the person with the seal on them. While you work on getting that set up, I'm going to see if I can make heads or tails of what I found based on what you've told me. I'll leave a clone here. If you need me just let it know and it will make sure I get the message. Now, if I may be excused. Before he could leave he watched the Hokage begin to fill out another sheet similar to the one filled out after the completion of his first s rank mission. Holding it out for Naruto to take he answered the unspoken question. Your tasks for this mission are far from over as this will be an ongoing investigation until you've found out everything you can from what you've looked through, or a more qualified person shows up to relieve you of your task. You will be paid for the mission as an ongoing investigation. Meaning when you find more information, and if it is deemed worthy of a reward, I will fill out another sheet and the notes will be added to this mission's file. Again I remind you that everything involving this mission is top secret unless I myself give you leave to speak of it. Understood, Hokage-sama. I'll see you later Oji-san. Hiruzen watched the boy retreat out the door before allowing himself a small sad smile. He hated having to put such a task on such an innocent child, but there really was no one else and he was unfortunately not as innocent as he seemed. Enko and Ibiki were still investigating the remains from the lair along with their own interrogation duties, and all other qualified shinobi we either out on missions or, haven't been back to the village in years. Tsunade, Jiraiya, I could really use your help about now. He gazed out the window noticing a small speck on the horizon. Looks like more work is on the way. Well I guess I didn't accept this position for the long vacations. Sighing he locked up the two sheets that held the detailed information Naruto had given him before turning back to his paperwork to keep busy until the new message came. A small feeling of dread seemed to fly along with it. Naruto sat in his room, meditating, as memories of the information he discovered ran through his head. He was linking what he'd read from the scrolls and books with what he saw in the lair. It would be a slow process, but by taking what his clones had learned after dispelling them, he allowed himself to make links that he hadn't seen initially. From the detailed explanations of the experiments, to the twisted results they showed, he was systematically reconstructing parts of the life of a madman in his head. His hopes were that when he was finished he could find out exactly how the seal worked and find a way to cage its effects if he wasn't able to abolish them altogether. The experiments themselves were rather ruthless and gut-wrenching, but he'd seen, experienced the like or worse in many cases, so it didn't affect him too much. He still would seem paler than normal to anyone who knew him well. By the time he finished analyzing the tenth experiment he was more than ready for a break. Which was convenient because it was only a moment later that he felt information from the clone in the Hokage's office come to him. It seemed that they really were short-handed as a notice had just came in from the recently departed Team 7. 
Their mission had been raised to AB rank, possibly lower rank when they had gotten attacked by the infamous Demon Brothers. His mind processed the information as he sat there. The two were in the bingo book as Chunin ranked missing Nin from Karigakur no Sato. Gozu and Maizu easily filled the qualifications to raise the mission difficulty. Wasting no more time Naruto gathered his belongings before heading to his hideaway to gather the tools he would need. With his ninja to once again strapped to his back, and his shin and forearm guards strapped in place, he was out the door and off to the tower once again. So the great Uchiha needs more company to bask in his glory I hear. Was his remark as he walked into the office. Hiruzen couldn't help but chuckle. Hi Naruto. It would seem that way. I assume that you have everything you need. The Hokage looked the boy over quickly taking note of the sword and guards as well as the lack of a backpack. You do realize that you will be there until the bridge is finished correct? Hi, I am all prepared. He pulled out a few scrolls and showed them off before pocketing them again. All I need is a mission scroll and I'll be on my way to worship the ground the Uchiha walks upon. Okay Naruto. I know they aren't the most pleasant of people to work with, but please remember that they are your comrades, and try not to kill them. Naruto only laughed a little as he nodded before catching the scroll thrown his way. And I will try to have a meeting set up for you and the previously discussed person upon your return. Sounds good Oji-san. I'll see you when I get back. Make sure the village stays in one piece so we can roll out the red carpet when the victorious Bobble Head Quartet returns. With that last jab in there he was often bounding towards the gates. Had he been a normal genin, or still in his mask from school, he would have been excited about leaving the village. As he was now though he merely waved the mission scroll at the gate guards as he stepped out with his nose buried in the bingo book that he had purchased recently. The demon brothers were missing Nin after all, so chances of there being others on this little tour would be very high. He focused on the Karigakur ones specifically as the Nins would probably want to work with other Nins that they would be familiar with, or at least share some background with. Momochi Zabuza, Demon of the Bloody Mist. Rank Jonin, Tamatsu Uesugi, Herald of the Squall. Rank Chunin, Kafu Oba, Blood Red Tide. Rank Jonin, damn all these guys have nicknames. Now that I think about it, the Konoha Jonin seem to have nicknames too. Maybe I should start thinking of one for myself, or are they normally given to you by someone? Huh, oh well, looks like I'm going to have company before I need to worry about that. With one last push of a branch he spun around in the air, blocking the numerous projectiles coming his way with a kanai in each hand. His assailant appeared on the branch he just left and stood facing him. Ah, Kafu-san. I was just reading about you. Naruto addressed the man while waving his bingo book in the air. You're pretty famous. I'll admit I'm slightly impressed Gaki, but you are far from being a hunter nin. I'll let you go with a free pass this time and a warning. This route is off limits as of now. Turn back home and I'll let you off the hook just this once. Ah but I really wanted to see my friends. Maybe you saw them. One was probably scratching away fleas and carries a little dog with him, the other boy probably had a storm cloud permanently raining on his parade. You wouldn't have been able to miss the bright pink hair of the girl though. Wouldn't be able to miss her squealing either no doubt. They would have been traveling with a one-eyed roster and an old drunk. You sure have a funny way of talking about your friends their kid, but it is rather amusing. They did pass by here not too long ago. I was told by my employer to let them through since he wanted to know that they died with a little hope of reaching their destination. For some reason he seems to have a fetish for crushing people's hope. Kafu chuckled out. Well if you're not going to let me pass, and I won't go back to the village without completing my mission I guess there is only one thing left to do. Naruto held his hand out, two fingers extended toward Kafu. Said man got ready for anything. The kid hadn't done any seals so it could be a bloodline. His senses turned full tilt onto the boy before him, getting ready to tell him to move away from danger at a moment's notice. Do you really think you can take on the blood red tide of Kiri little Jenin? Not can. Dot did. Kafu's eyes narrowed at the implied promise of defeat, but before he could call the bluff he heard another word. Bang. His eyes widened at his world became pain. An explosion had rocked from right under him without any warning. He couldn't understand if it was a trap jutsu or something else nor did he really care at the moment. All he cared about right then was getting the pain to stop. 
As he hit the forest floor with a sickening thump and adjoining snaps of bone, the pain renewed as he looked and saw his left arm and leg no longer attached. Clamping his right hand over the stump that was left of his other arm he tried to staunch the bleeding in a vain attempt to live. He looked up when he heard footsteps coming closer and tried to push himself farther away with his one good leg. You see Kafu, the one mistake you made was underestimating me. You may be a Jonan and I may be a Jenin, but just because you outrank me does not mean I have no skills at all. The same voice came from the opposite direction. Some of us Jenin, in newly graduated I might add, have pushed ourselves above and beyond what was needed in order to pass. Some of us know what the real world is like and what it takes to survive. Another voice joined in and he turned his head again to see the same blonde once more. Some of us have been playing the survival game all our lives. Goodbye Kafu San. With a single motion Kafu's head was separated from his body and all he knew was darkness. Sorry Kafu San, but I didn't have time to play with you right now. Naruto rifled through the man's belongings, taking anything he deemed worth having including money, weapons, jutsu scrolls and some scrolls that seemed to pertain to the man's mission. The last item he too from Kafu was what had to be the man's main weapon. A black bladed katana that was almost as tall as Naruto. Its sheath was a deep red that almost looked like fresh spilled blood. With his ninja to secured parallel to the ground at his lower back, Naruto strapped the katana crosswise over his right shoulder. He would now have a blade at his disposal from either hand should one be occupied, though the katana would be a little more awkward to draw in combat. Standing up he used a quick katan, Gokaku no Jutsu to destroy the body before sealing away the head and belongings. Saying a quick prayer he took to the trees again, picking up his pace a little in order to make up for lost time. He wanted to make sure he caught up with them faster now as he knew there would be more Jonin level trouble ahead of them, more than one if they were unlucky. Kakashi was not having fun. He was currently watching as his Genin team was attempting to fight off Zabaza's Mizu Bunshin. He sent for backup, but with missions picking up the way they had been lately, there was little hope of it coming today, let alone right this minute. He could only reflect on what had happened and hope that his students would have the sense to run away. That was looking highly unlikely though. First Zabuza appeared and after a short skirmish he brought the mist in. That was when everything started to go to hell. Up until the point of his capture Kakashi had been barely keeping up with the missing Nin. He knew there were a couple of close calls in there, but as soon as he landed in the water it was over. Water was Zabaza's main element which gave him the home field advantage. As soon as Kakashi's head poked out of the water it was already too late. The water prison was forming and before he could come up with a counter he was trapped. It was then that he had told his team to make a run for it. Sakura and Kiba were clearly shaking, Tazuna was nearly pissing himself, but to his dismay it was the Uchiha that turned out to be the dumbest one of the group. He arrogantly strode to the front of the line and demanded Zabuza let his sensei go. Kakashi wasn't stupid. He knew that the only reason the boy wanted him free was because he saw his Sharingan. No doubt he was going to whine about it the entire trip, that is if the trip didn't include four spirits going to the afterlife together. Though he still figured the boy would demand answers even then. He had been further horrified when Zabuza created more Bunshin and began attacking the trio of Genin. Merely toying with them. Even though they were only Bunshin they were still a lot stronger than any mere Genin. All they ended up accomplishing was earning a new set of scars, and sealing their fates as Sasuke taunted the amused demon more. It seemed that this would be the end. He could hear the pipes of the afterlife playing a sad tune for them already. No, he really could hear someone playing pipes. He did his best to turn his head out towards the water, noticing as Zabuza did the same. The Bunshin, being distracted in the same manner, were taken out but the three genin with little trouble because of that. Though when Sasuke tried to charge out to take on the main body of the Kiri Nin, he found that the water there wasn't nearly as shallow as he had thought based on how the enemy ninja was simply standing on it. Fuming and now soaked, he waded back to the shore as he tried to think of a way to get out there and beat the man to a pulp. Both of the elder ninja ignored the fuming ninja though as a shadow started to form out of the dispersing mist. As the figure got closer Kakashi was able to make out small details. Whoever it was was a ninja that much was certain. They were walking on the surface of the water towards the group. They were also rather short, looking to be about the size of his own students. What really threw him off though was that the person was alone. 
Surely Hokage-sama would have sent more than one person as backup. Then the mist cleared away from the figure and Kakashi's heart sank. There was the telltale blonde hair, blue eyes and whiskered cheeks of Uzumaki Naruto, calmly playing a tune on a set of pan pipes. Now there would be a number of five bodies for Konoha to retrieve and there was nothing Kakashi could do about it. Zabuza on the other hand was not just idly musing over the blonde. No, he was searching the area for any more chakra signatures. He had seen what was strapped on the boy's back and he didn't want to be surprised by any group that could take out Kafu. He may not have been one of the seven swordsmen like Zabuza, but he was no slouch of a ninja either, maybe a bit overconfident though. The whole time he was searching, Naruto was getting closer. It unnerved Zabuza how calm the boy was. Either he was stupid like that raven-haired brat or he was very trusting of his companions. Something told him to be wary of the blonde and he wasn't going to dismiss his gut feeling. Creating a few more Mizu Bunshin, he had them surround the boy before he got too close. What is your business here brat? One of the clones addressed Naruto, who in turn simply stopped playing his music and calmly stowed his pipes away. Angling his body out to look around the Bunshin he spotted Kakashi in the bubble of water. Ah, so I finally caught up. No offense but with Tazuna-san in tow I didn't think you would make it so far this fast. You idiot, get out of here you're no match for Zabuza. Get whatever backup you came with and report to the Hokage. Kakashi resigned himself to his fate. Mo, but Kakashi-san I wanted to play a little. Let me have some fun before you shoo me off. Without even seeing a movement from the boy, all of the clones suddenly broke into water and splashed away. Both Jonin stared wide-eyed now. Here was a genin who had just taken out clones of one of the seven swordsmen. Sure they may not have been a full-powered ninja, but that didn't make them pushovers. Naruto once again walked slowly towards the pair. When he was about 10 feet away he stopped and looked at Zabuza. Want you let him go please. I really don't want to have to do anything drastic. Get lost kid before I decide you really are a threat. Ah, so you were considering it already. Well that's a start I guess, but you make it sound like you won't give in. I guess that means I will just have to improvise. Now Naruto wasn't a moron as I'm sure you've figured out by now. He knew that the seven swordsmen of the mist were extremely deadly, and chances of him surviving a fight with one were between slim and none, but he wouldn't have to fight one at all. Making a few hand seals his chest puffed out. Futon. Rinkuden, a concentrated blast of air headed straight for Zabuza's arm that was keeping the water prison active. Having no time to counter Zabuza had two choices. 1. Release the jutsu and deal with this new and rather intriguing boy in Hitaki Kakashi, the copy ninja. Or 2. Let the jutsu hit his arm, most likely breaking it and releasing the jutsu, then have to deal with the blonde and Kakashi anyway. Well that was a rather obvious decision for him as he jumped back away from the blast, allowing the compressed air to sail harmlessly by him, but before he could get his bearings back though he was hit with another blast of air from the direction of his former prisoner. Futon. Daytapa, the blast sent him into a tree on the shore knocking him into a daze for a couple seconds, but that was all Kakashi needed as Kanai shot out and disabled Zabaza's arms and legs. Slumping to the ground he watched as the two walked to him, so I guess this is the end of the fun huh? Hi. Find peace in death Zabuza San. Kakashi brought up a kanai and was about to take the man's life but dove out of the way instead as a couple sanban struck Zabuza's neck. The missing nin's eyes went wide before he slumped lifelessly to the ground. A small figure wearing an anbu style mask jumped down beside the corpse and bowed at Kakashi. I thank you for your assistance in the death of Momochi Zabuza, and apologize that I could not get here sooner. He seems to have caused you quite a bit of trouble. Kakashi rubbed the back of his head in embarrassment. Ha <laughs> ha. Don't worry about it Hunter San. It all worked out in the end right? Indeed. They both looked over to where the blonde was checking the corpse. Well he definitely seems dead. I congratulate you on you skills, Hunter San. The Hunter Nin's eyes widened even though none of those present could see it. Naruto started towards the ninja. Tell me, Hunter-san, how long have you been after this one? Before Kakashi or Naruto could react the hunter nin shunshin to the body of Zabuza then grabbing onto him shunshined away. HMPH. That one does have some skills after all. The other genin and Tazuna had just reached the two in time to see Naruto before he had a chance to mask his anger. They stopped a bit short, suddenly feeling slightly uneasy. That all changed though when he smiled again and turned to them. 
Well now that that is over with, what say we get a move on to Tazuna's place so we can get on with this mission? HN. What are you doing here Dobi? We were doing fine without you. Sasuke, arrogant as usual. And his personal cheerleader right on cue. Yeah. Didn't you see how Sasuke-kun took out all those guys? He was so cool. Surprisingly Kiba had nothing to say, nor did Kakashi apparently as he collapsed forward to land face first in the dirt. Shit. Looks like I used my eye a bit too much. You're going to have to carry me with you. Sorry. The Jonin said a bit sheepishly. Easy enough. Cage bunch and no jutsu. A few clones popped up and soon had Kakashi slung between them. On their way past him Naruto, as an afterthought, pulled Kakashi's hitai-ite back over his eye, much to the Jonin's relief. As they made their way to Tazuna's village Naruto looked at his comrades. The different emotions were easily read on everyone's faces. Kakashi was the most reserved, but looking closely he could see his eyeball moving under his closed eyelid. He may be resting but his mind was still working feverishly. The Uchiha was still walking with his nose in the air, despite how torn up he was from the fight with Zabaza's clones, and of course the Banshee was right beside him, stroking his ego seemingly unaware that she had almost died a few minutes ago. Meanwhile Kiba was talking to Akamaru about how he decimated those bunshin. Lastly, Tazuna was looking around scared out of his wits. Naruto sighed. Out of everyone here only Kakashi, himself and surprisingly Tazuna, were the only ones doing remotely the right thing. The other three genin being too openly full of themselves after their first day of real fighting. Naruto. Kakashi whispered with his eyes still closed. He addressed the masked Jonin without turning his head. Hi. I need to talk to you when we get to Tazuna's house, alone. Hi. Unfortunately his ears weren't the only ones to hear the statement. Why should the Dobi get a private lesson when it can go to someone more worthy? Like myself. The always arrogant Uchiha unfortunately was one of those people. Sasuke the only thing you are worthy of is you are right now as fodder. Drop our ego and take a look around for once. Maybe just maybe you'll actually see in an attack coming before it hits you. Naruto was in no mood to hear the boy's high and mighty talks right now. Don't you talk to Sasuke-kun like that. He is more worthy of a private lesson than you'll ever be Naruto Baka. With an attitude like that it's no wonder your parents left you. Sakura would have no idea that she was closer to death at that moment than during any point of their fight with Zabuza. Upon hearing her statement Kakashi's eye widened as he shot out his arm and caught Naruto just as he was about to rush her. Naruto was gritting his teeth in anger at the pink-haired bitch, but luckily Kakashi had caught him before he made a rash move. Taking some calming breaths before he could make a mistake he leveled his glare on Sakura, who had enough sense to back away a little. Sakura, do not presume that you know even a second of my life or that of my parents. I may not know who they are, but you certainly don't either. So until anyone has a definite answer of who they are and what they are like, don't you dare belittle them. With a little key added in Sakura was soon hiding behind Tazuna. Naruto just scoffed at her actions as he motioned for Tazuna to continue. After another hour of walking they finally arrived at Tazuna's house on the edge of a dilapidated village. They were welcomed by Tazuna's daughter Tsunami who wore an obviously fake smile. Though she was genuinely happy that her father arrived safely, you could see the stress behind her features. She led them to their rooms, allowing Kakashi and Sakura their own while Kiba, Sasuke and Naruto would be bunked together in one of the larger rooms. The two Team 7 boys looked less than pleased at the news, whereas Naruto seemed to care less where he slept. While Team 7 was getting situated, Naruto decided to meet with Kakashi as promised. Upon entering the Jonin's room he found the man to be resting in the same position he was in when they laid him out. While his face was clam and his body was unmoving, Naruto could almost see the gears in his head spinning. He closed the door and slipped a seal over the joint to make sure they wouldn't be interrupted. As he knelt next to Kakashi the man opened his eyes and just stared at the ceiling. Naruto. Hi, where did you get that katana? From a ninja I killed on the way to you. The boy stated easily. Do you really expect me to believe that you took on a Jonin level missing nin in the time it took you to catch up to us? and that you were able to walk away without a scratch. No I don't expect you to believe either. He was simply unprepared and underestimated who he was fighting. Plant a seed in the side of a mountain and the mountain will stay standing. 
Give that seed what it needs to grow and soon you will see its roots dig into the rock face and, over time, the mountain will begin to crack. So you're saying you only beat him because he gave you a chance to. That still doesn't sound very believable. The Jonin scoffed. Kakashi, when you look at me, what do you see? I see a genin with decent skills and timing. Since our fight with Zabuza was only a few seconds long, at least the portion of it where you showed off any skills, I really don't have much to go on. So then what level of threat do you see me as to you? Kakashi started to chuckle a bit. At the moment you might as well be a cage for the amount of movement I can make. A quick glare from the genin told him this was no time to joke around. Sighing he took a moment to think over what he knew from the boys academy results and what little he's seen of him. When at full potential I would see you as an above average genin with a decent head on his shoulders. Then you would also fall to me. Kakashi was surprised at the boy's seriousness when he said that. Then scowled at him thinking the genin had the nerve to underestimate him. Then just how strong do you think you are? He spat out with a bit more venom than he meant to. Naruto just got up and walked towards the door. He turned back when he got within touching distance. Stronger than you think I am. He said nonchalantly before removing his seal and leaving the room. Kakashi was still a bit angry at the bite to his pride, but something disturbed him about the boy. Not once did he portray any emotion. He never let his voice raise in anger or show any sign of fear. As he went over their conversation, along with recent events and revelations, the only thing he could think of was that Naruto was right. Had he fought against the blonde he would have conserved his energy by lowering his level a bit. That could have easily been his downfall. It was the same way many ninja had died in years past, and was certain to be their fatal mistake in future years as well. It dawned on him then exactly what Naruto had done all these years. It was the ninja's greatest tool after all, deception. By dinner that night Kakashi was capable enough to use his own hands to eat, though he had to be carried to the table. The meal was meager, but from what they saw of the village, it was probably the normal for this area. The only disturbance that came from the meal was from a small boy that had arrived not long before they sat down. Inari was Tsunami's son and seemed to be rather quiet, along with almost matching Mr. Moody with his brooding. It wasn't until halfway through dinner that the boy slammed his hands on the table and glared at the ninja. Then without a word he stood up and disappeared from the room. Is he mute? Kiba asked in general. A simple statement was enough to make Tsunami sob a little and cause Tazuna to glare at the table in front of him. Kiba, clearly finesse isn't your game, so you may want to tone it down while you are here. Tazuna-san, Tsunami-san, if you don't mind would you explain the situation? Talking about it may help more than bottling it up. The adults searched the boy wondering just where he was coming from, while Kiba was gritting his teeth. It was Tazuna who broke the silence first. Telling them about the boy's past and how Gato had his father figure killed right in front of the whole village. He talked about how Gato was driving their economy into the ground while the man himself got fat off of the money they managed to scrounge together along with his own illegal dealings. Then he came to how the bridge he was building was possibly their last hope of ever getting out from under a tyrant's thumb. Throughout the entire explanation, Naruto was gripping the edge of the table tighter and tighter until his knuckles were white from the strain. When Tazuna's story ended Tsunami was crying a bit into her hands while Tazuna himself had balled his hands into tight fists. If there were a way to get rid of Gato our lives wouldn't have to be this way. I am starting to believe that if we do ever finish this bridge he will just find another way to take money from us. All we can do is hope for the best and push forward. HN, you should just realize when you have your betters around you and do as they demand. Smack. Sasuke didn't get to finish as an irate Naruto punched him into a wall. Tem if I ever hear you say something like that again I swear you won't live to see another sunrise. Sasuke was doing his best to glare at Naruto, but the effect was lessened drastically as he held his swelling jaw in pain. Kakashi sensei did you hear that? Naruto just made a threat on Sasuke kun's life. That is against the laws of Konoha. Like a loyal dog Sakura was at her master's defense immediately. Hi it is Sakura. I will be sure to take it up with his Jonin sensei when we get back so don't worry, Naruto will get the proper punishment he deserves. Kakashi I smiled at the girl as she turned to Naruto and gave him a smirk. To her surprise Naruto smirked right back. Go ahead Kakashi. I deserve it. I'll take any punishment my Jonin sensei deems appropriate. Giving a small chuckle he walked out of the house. 
It wasn't until a few minutes after the door was shut when Sakura realized what was said. But Kakashi Sensei. Naruto Baka doesn't have a Jonin Sensei. Hmm. You say something Sakura. Sakura's jaw hit the floor. Her own Sensei wasn't going to defend her true love. She sat in stunned silence trying to think of what that meant. Technically Kakashi had agreed to follow the right steps for discipline according to Kanaha's laws, but said laws were never adjusted to allow for the possibility of a genin with no sensei in the ninja ranks. Which meant the man that was trusted with their care had knowingly followed a loophole, essentially allowing Naruto to get away with hitting his own student without punishment. Looking over at Sasuke she could see the registration with that same fact dawn in his eyes as he now glared at Kakashi. Well I think we should turn in for the night. We'll be getting up early tomorrow and you will all need all the rest you can get now. In the morning I will tell you all a little secret I know and we'll begin some training exercises. With the help of Tazuna Kakashi made his way to his room as his stunned and angry team split up into theirs. Completely forgetting that they were down by one member at the moment. Thanks for listening I hope you guys liked it don't forget to subscribe and leave a like for more what ifs and support the author, see you guys in the next video.